So it's Saturday night. You have the duty. Um, were you thinking that uh, you're going to sleep in on Sunday morning? Yes. When there was nothing happening, that that was you were free to sleep in. So <clears throat> we were in barracks. We all had every Marine had a rifle, but we had no ammunition. So at and we had a, a movie in a tent that we could go to for entertainment if you were assigned to the, sta to the, to the station. So uh, I think I went to a movie and then checked in and I was in no hurry to get up. So uh, then we heard uh, machine guns in the morning. At from a distance? No, we heard them, well, about, they were putting the flag up, I could hear the bugle, and... Uh, so it's 0800 in the morning, yes. raising the American flag, Right. and at the same time you're hear, hearing machine gun right. fire. Right, and the, you look out, the, the, uh, the Marine that was raising the flag was trying to go around the flagpole, so... He'd have some protection. I mean, which of course there's no protection. The Marine next to me was getting ready to go to church, and he said, "Man, the Army Air Force is on maneuvers." And he looked out, and he said, "It's the Reds, which were the big red walls." Then a, the sergeant came in and said, "Get the hell out of here! This is a real thing." So we all ran out, and uh, there were, it was a uh, construction going on. We ran out of my group into the bushes. Now there's no doubt in your mind. You can see the Japanese zeros. You can, you can see, see the markings. Can you see the pilots? You can see the pilots. They were. You could see the gold in their teeth, and they were. They were very happy. They were all smiling. And, and uh, they could turn that uh, to an emblem at 50 feet. The plane was so light uh, that there were zeros. But, and uh, these pilots had been trained in China anyway. They were all excellent pilots. So did you try to save any of the airplanes? Well, I, I got out. Uh, I, I was able to get out after the first wave, we had no ammunition. We had rivals, rifles, but no ammunition. So uh, we were trying to save whatever we could. And I was able to taxi one of the planes off into the trees. But I think I did a little damage to the plane just getting it. So it's, it was out of service as well. So. So the, uh, the strafing uh, had ended then, or? First, the first wave of uh, strafing ended, and then they, uh, there would be about a 20-minute delay, and then, then you see the bombers come in. So is it chaos during this, this first wave, and did you have time to regroup and, and sort out the chaos in that 20 minutes, or did it just stay chaos? I'll tell you, we didn't, you don't know, it, it felt like you we were having a dream. I mean, it, it didn't seem real. You were doing what you were doing like you think it's a, a dream. Then it finally uh, you all of a sudden know what it is. Uh, but you don't get frightened until after it's halfway over and you say, Jesus, I could be killed here. Uh, Was anybody, any of your shipmates there wounded? Yes, uh, uh, two of them, uh, one on each side of me in the, uh, in the, in the bush. And uh, I was in the lucky three feet that uh, didn't hit. One was shot in the buttocks and the other was in the leg. Did you um, tend to the, to the wounded? I, I, I took one of them, the one with the wound in the buttocks, to the, 
to a sick bay and uh, the doctor was there. He's, he was administering first aid, basically. Uh, and uh, he told the big tough Marine uh, that he was going to have to run a swab through to clean out his, uh, his wound. And he says, I can give you some anesthesia. And he says, no, I can handle it, Doc. So the uh, doctor took this long swab with iodine and oh. ran it through. Well, the guy groaned, wet his pants, and fainted. So that was uh, that was how tough that guy was. I mean, it's uh, you don't know what's going to happen.